This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Open your mouth. Walk around your house. Thank you, Lord. I got, I got chairs. Thank you, Jesus. I got light bulb. Walk outside. Lord, look at how what you thank you, Lord. You give him thanks with your mouth. And watch your mouth thanksgiving eradicate those negative emotions that try to run your day. You open your mouth, but turn your name and say, open your mouth. And give God thanks. Trinidad and Tobago. Get ready. It's a blessing straight from heaven. Anything with the Word of God is perfect. And the Word of God in the mouth of a believer coming out of your mouth produces power, produces change. For one day only, join Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the 2020 Change Experience. Admission is free, but seats are limited. Call or go online to register today. is an authority that God has put on giving thanks to him, especially when it goes against and contradicts how you feel. If you want to absolutely get victory over negative emotions, if you will begin to employ thanksgiving and gratitude, a gracious, grateful heart and attitude, if you begin to do this, you'll overcome those negative emotions. In everything, give thanks. Well, look at Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 through 7. What about when you're worried? I'm not saying that you won't get worried. I'm not saying that you won't feel lonely. I'm not saying that you won't feel depressed. But I am saying to you, if you can't think of a scripture, or if you can't remember none of the stuff I've talked about in this series, find something to give God thanks in the middle of the thing. Learn how to do that. In verse 6, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, he says, And the peace of God, and the peace of God, which passes your understanding, it'll keep your heart and your minds. Peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. I dare you to try it in the middle of a crazy situation where you feel like you're about to lose your mind, and you say, Lord, I thank you that you got me right now. He said, peace will keep your mind, and, and it'll do it through Christ Jesus. Now, uh, look at this uh, through the, look, let's, let's get New Living Translation on this here too, because when he talks about be careful for, for nothing, he's talking about don't worry, don't be anxious. You will have a ample opportunity to be worried about a lot of stuff, the New Living Translation says, don't worry about anything. Are you kidding me? People worry about everything. Now, if you tell me not to worry about anything, there must be something you're providing for me so that I can, can, can at least overcome worry when it comes up, because worry seems to appear a lot. And he says, don't worry about anything. Now, here's, he's giving you a choice here. Instead of worrying, Pray about everything. Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything. Oh, my God. Instead of worry, so worry comes, the next thing you need to ask yourself, have I talked to God about this? Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. All right, so you can sit there and you can worry about what you don't have, and you hadn't even thought about this. Have you talked to God about it? What are you worrying about? Take this to God, tell him what you need, all right, and then thank him for all he has done. In other words, you're worrying about, I ain't got enough money to pay this bill. I ain't got enough money to do that. He says, have you taken it to God? No. Well, take it to God. Lord, I thank you, and I need provisions to take care of this. I need provisions to take care of that. And then what do you do every time the worry comes up? Lord, 
I thank you that you heard me, and I have provisions to take care of that. See, that keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. It keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. You know, tomorrow, if you're not careful, you can open the door to all types of emotional feelings, feelings of loneliness, feelings of rejection, feelings of not being accepted, maybe things you think about every year during this time where those thoughts will begin to weigh you down and depression will knock on the door. You can do that. Or you can go take it to God and spend the day thanking Him for stuff you hadn't even seen yet. But if you want to stay in peace and let the God of peace and love show up, you're going to have to employ these things. These just can't be little nice, sweet little Christmas card, uh, Thanksgiving uh, 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 little sayings that you just read. You have to employ them. You have to employ them. What I'm preaching to you right now, it can't be, oh, wow, that was an inspirational message. No, I am not trying to be inspirational. I'm trying to be instructional. I'm trying to give you something that's going to work tomorrow. All right? Something that's going to work tomorrow when somebody you was expecting to show up didn't show up, and tomorrow you, 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 you forget all that. Get up in the morning, make an egg sandwich, praise God, and be thankful for this egg sandwich. <laughs> Are you listening to me? All right, let's go a little deeper in this now. Let me, let me give you three ways to practice, since we're talking about instructional. Let's give me, let me give you three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. Three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. You can practice these tomorrow if you need to. Number one, here's what you can practice. Thank and praise God for everything in your life. You can, you can wake up and thank and praise God for everything in your life. You may not have all that you want in your life, but you need to look around, have a flashback, and thank and praise God for everything that you have. This is a part of setting your thermostat. You can get up in the morning like, Lord, I thank you. You can start off in the morning, in the bed before you get up. Lord, I thank you I had a good night's sleep last night. Thank you, Lord. I ain't got to go to work this morning. <laughs> you, you, you can start off as a thermostat setting your day with Thanksgiving. Thank you I got a roof over my head, Lord. Thank you, Lord, like they're doing the Baptist church. I woke up in my right mind. Huh? Still have the use of my limbs. Got my eyes, hallelujah. Brain still function, and I can remember how old I am. See, you will preach to yourself, and before you know it, you're happy, praise God. Thank you, Lord, I might not have filet mignon in the, in, in the refrigerator, but I got ground beef. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to make a decision to practically Thank and praise God for everything in your life. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. To thank and praise God for everything that you have in your life. These are practical things where you can do this. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to him. So we're not talking about you, you know, thinking of the thanksgiving. He's talking about opening your mouth. Open your mouth, whether you're around somebody or not. Open your mouth. Walk around your house. Thank you, Lord, I got, I got chairs. Thank you, Jesus, I got light bulbs. Walk outside. Lord, look at what you do. Thank you, Lord. You give him thanks with your mouth. <laughs> and watch your mouth thanksgiving eradicate those negative emotions that try to run your day. You open your mouth. Or turn your neighbor and say, open your mouth and give God thanks. Amen? So here's the second way you can practice an attitude of thankfulness in, in your everyday life. Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. <laughs> Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. Wake up tomorrow and, and, and set yourself. How do you do that? The first thing you say to yourself tomorrow is, uh, tonight, oh, right now, watch your mouth. Turn your name and say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. 
That'll get you in trouble always. Watch them out. Sometimes they get ready to say it. I say, don't say it. Don't say it. I say, you know what I'm going to say? Yeah, I got an idea. Don't say it. <laughs> you can practice Thanksgiving by watching your mouth and don't complain about anything. Don't complain about I'm challenging you right now. Don't complain about anything. I don't care what you have planned for tomorrow or don't have planned for tomorrow. Don't complain about anything. Well, y'all just don't understand. See, y'all might, might be able to afford a turkey, but I can't afford nothing but bologna. Don't complain. Get you some butter, fry that bologna up. <laughs> you know, it could, it could be good now. You know, I remember them days. If you do it right, the bologna will be good. It'll bless you. <laughs> get that bologna, get some light bread, some mustard. Stick some tomatoes on top of that thing. Shut your mouth now. <laughs> Get some Pringles tater chip to go with that thing. The bologna can bless you now. You just got to know how to work it. <laughs> Don't complain about anything. Don't complain about it. Some of y'all, somebody got a taste for some bologna right now. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember that bologna, you put it in that pan and then the heat and that thing blew up at the top like, y'all already know, right? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had a, 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 a cheese, you know, you used to melt the sheet cheese? In, anybody ever got government cheese? Don't raise your hand, I'm not trying to invite you. Okay. <laughs> in the big old brown box, the plastic around it, and, and you got to lean your weight in on it. <laughs> and then it break up in little pieces of cheese. Now, in our household, you, you know, we ain't throwing away the crumbs. We take them crumbs and put it on top of their bread because we know it's going to melt. But what happened when the gas wasn't paid for? The electri electricity was on, but the gas was off. Boy, you take that wax paper, put it on the ironing bowl, turn that iron on. Come on, somebody. That's broke, ain't it? Put that iron on, see that cheese start melting. <laughs> You got to figure out how to give God thanks in everything. Yeah. How many of you ever had hamburger helper without the hamburger? <laughs> huh? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the bread. <laughs> Sugar water yeah. without the Kool-Aid. Breakfast for dinner. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody right now. <laughs> Didn't have pancakes, but you had cornbread mix. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Don't compare yourself with others. This is practically how to have an attitude of thankfulness don't compare yourself with others. Don't wish that your life was different. Don't wish that your life, don't, don't even do that. You don't even know the plans that God has for you. Here's the word said, God says, the plans I have for you are good. They're good. So don't you, don't you deny or want, don't, you gotta be careful, I want to be different. I wish I wasn't me. Don't say that. Because God's plans for you are good. There's something about you that ain't like nobody else. And once you discover the plan of God for your life, yeah. you're going to be glad about it. Do not compare yourself. You can't have a, an attitude of gratitude when you're constantly comparing yourself with somebody else. Don't compare your, it, It's amazing. The very person you're trying to compare yourself with Somebody want to be like you, and you want to be like them? It's amazing. You think that don't nobody want to be like you? Just quit the comparison. Stop the comparison. Well, they got a, <laughs> they got a big, big turkey. My turkey looked like a Cornish hen. <laughs> Just tell yourself, my turkey is organic. <laughs> Now, I believe that these three points can put you to a place of contentment. Let me, let me look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 6. Now, look, look at this, 1 Timothy 6 and 6. 
He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. What does it mean to be content? It's a mind that's at ease. The ease of mind. Contentment, this place of satisfaction. Contentment, an ease of mind. You know, negative emotions won't let you have an ease of mind. In fact, negative emotions are there to, to destroy the ease of mind. Now, listen to me carefully. Now, in reading this, I'm thinking, all right, well, first of all, who wrote this? The Apostle Paul wrote this. Who did he write it to? It was a letter to Timothy. And I said, oh, my God, I didn't see that. The guy who wrote, be content, was in jail when he wrote it. He was in prison when he wrote it. Now, I didn't really get a hold of this until I actually visited the prison that Paul was in. I went to the prison that he was in. And we walked in the, it was, what, downstairs, Taffy, in, in, in a hole, really. And they would feed him and everything from a hole at the top. The ground, Paul's ground, was cold and eerie, and when the lights are off, it's pitch black. The guy who said, be content, be eased, have an ease of mind, was in a dark prison waiting to be uh, killed. I mean, they had his name up there, the date when he was going to get killed. And he wrote, godliness with contentment is great gain. Here's a man who should not have had an ease of mind saying, be content. Now, you may not be in line waiting execution, but he says, even in line awaiting execution, be content. And you upset because you got two eggs instead of four. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Be content. And he says, godliness with contentment how many of you want to see great gain in 2019? Yeah. Amen. Equals great gain. There's something about living a life of contentment, even in the midst of hard times, that will make the difference in your life, an ease of mind. So I want to close this by showing you this. There's some benefits. There are some actual, tested, proven benefits that come from being thankful and having a a, 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 a gracious attitude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 12 of them and then close with three scriptures and, and we're out. Number one, benefits of thank, thankfulness. It reduces depression. When you live this thankful life that I'm talking about, it will reduce depression. Number two, a thankful life will get your promotion at work. What? Don't nobody want to promote somebody that complained and, and got a problem all the time? A thankful life will get you promotion at work. An ungrateful, well, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> number three, number three, a thankfulness, thankfulness will improve our self-esteem. You practicing living a thankful life will improve your, it's been proven, it will improve your self-esteem. Number four, Thankfulness will increase our energy. I tell you what, when you start walking around and living a thankful life, man, you, you, you'll, you'll improve your energy. Number five, you know, being thankful will help you to develop a strong immunity system. Being thankful will help you. That attitude, that diseasement, being thankful will help you to develop strong immunity. Been proven. Number six, being thankful will decrease blood pressure. I'm on blood pressure medicine. I, I think you just need to be a little bit more thankful. Number seven, being thankful will increase sleep quality. Being thankful will increase sleep, sleep quality. I was amazed at some of these studies that they have done where Thanksgiving is concerned. 
Number eight, being thankful will, will reduce and cope with negative stress. Being thankful. You can go around and meditate on the bad emotions and be stressed out over it. Being thankful will reduce that stress. Number nine, being thankful will reduce negative emotions such as envy, anger, and hatred. Just being thankful. Envy, anger, hatred. Being thankful. I don't know who you, I don't know who you got coming over your house tomorrow. You might have somebody coming over your house you don't like, and there's some kin to you. <laughs> Start the night being thankful, and you can greet them with a holy hug tomorrow. <laughs> Watch this. Being thankful will help you to become more likable. People like thankful folks. Being thankful will make you become more likable. Number 11, being thankful will increase feelings of happiness and well-being. Just being thankful. The feelings will be something that'll be under, those negative feelings will be under attack by being thankful. And then number 12, being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Isn't that amazing? See, God is saying, his will for our lives is to practice thanksgiving. Look at all of the benefits that come, physical, social, relationships. Look at all the benefits that come just by being thankful. Let me close with these three scriptures. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. We, we are familiar with the first part of the scripture, Colossians 3, 15. I don't think we read the last part of the scripture. I want you to pay attention to it. He says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Well, what do I need to do so the peace of God can rule in my heart? I want peace rule in my heart. I want peace rule in my heart, not stress. I want peace rule in my heart, not depression. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body. And he said, how am I going to do this? He says, and be thankful. Be thankful. I got my answer. You want peace ruling in your heart? Be thankful. You want to give way to peace and wholeness and security in the midst of turmoil? Be thankful. Praise God. The, the benefits that come when a Christian makes his mind up that I am going to practice Thanksgiving. This is not going to be a seasonal thing. It's not going to be just on the holiday of Thanksgiving. This is a part of my life as a Christian. Look what he says in Psalms 104, and then Psalms 106 and 1, and we'll close. Psalms 104, and just the encouragement that I get from Psalms 104 isn't something that I want to encourage you with. He says, bless the Lord. Now, here he is talking to his soul. That's where his emotions are. Now, you may have to talk to your soul. You may have to talk to your soul. I, I, I went to a, a movie last night, Taff and I, to see a premiere. Uh, the, the something, uh, the, the little boxing thing. And, 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 and I was wondering why hadn't I gone to this movie theater in, in, in a long time? And I'm just trying to figure out there's some reason why I hadn't gone to this movie theater, but I couldn't figure out why I hadn't gone to the movie theater until I got there and remember, you know, your cousins came to the movie theater last night <laughs> and talked through the whole thing. You, you ever been to that? Talk through the whole thing. I want to give a play-by-play -play commentary on the whole thing. Then sister girl come on the right side with her phone. Hey, girl, how you doing? Oh, I'm just here doing that. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm just thinking the whole thing. You would think, well, a little courtesy that just kind of says that people can't hear because I'm talking. No. They just kept on talking. Through the whole, you understand what I'm saying? Through the whole thing. And then I sat down, and then this big old head just right in the middle and you know, if you lean back, the head will disappear. No, they want to sit up the whole time. <laughs> and I said, now I remember why I don't come to this theater. Because Pookie and Queen and them come at nighttime, and I need to go somewhere else. <laughs> the whole, whole movie.
goofy. Well, you don't talk about that. No, you're going to jump like that. No, 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 they're probably going to do it right here. Hello. No, you ain't here right now. Oh, my God, no. All y'all cousins came last night. So I had to talk to my soul. I had to talk to my soul because a long time ago, you could say, shh. But do that today. Sh who you shushing? Who you shushing? You don't shush me. So sometimes you have to talk to your soul. And then she finally leaned back. I said, look at the Lord. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? But I ain't going there no more. I ain't never going there no more. In every situation that happens, you can take authority over your emotions. You can take authority over how you feel. It's time for you to win the battle over your emotions. The most powerful weapon you possess is your mouth. Yes. Load it with the Word of God. Hallelujah. For a love gift of $30 or more, we would like to offer you the Delivered from Depression 5 message series. Your trouble ain't gonna last always. I'm telling you right now that he will lift you up. He will bring you out. And the God of peace and love shall be with you. And I declare over your life, all is well. Get the Emotional Wellness Toolkit Combo today for a love gift of $90 or more. This combo includes a total of 19 messages from the series The Secret to Stable Emotions, Peace That Prevails, Delivered from Depression, and Maintaining a Sound Mind. Don't delay. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Creflo and Taffy Dollar are blanketing the world with the message of grace and biblical equality. Souls are being saved and lives are being transformed all around the world. I'm so excited to be exiting the change experience here in Kingston, Jamaica. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. Their ministry, World Changers a Church, you know, World Changers International, it really does make a difference in people's lives. There's so many people, too many for them to, to count of, of how their lives have been impacted. And now it's your time. Join us October 11th at the Hilton Memorial Chapel and in Philadelphia, November 15th at the Hilton Philadelphia City Avenue Grand Ballroom. Registration is free, but seats are limited. Call, text, or go online to register today. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. 